Uh, Mark, is there anything you learned about your team that maybe you can only find out against an opponent of that caliber? I think we learned just that uh, uh, we thought we had a pretty good, pretty mature group of young young players, and I think that uh, was was very evident in the second half, and particularly at halftime, just in terms of of their approach. You know, there was no panic, there was no elements of of fear, there was no there was nothing. You know, and and other than you know, here's here's what we need to improve upon in every phase. We kind of broke down part of that our own doing, part of that in elite opponents doing, uh, in terms of offensively, defensively, and in special teams breaking down in various ways, um, and and identifying it and, and, and going on. Mark, how much did that help this team down the road? You yeah, talked about the second half, you were down, there was no fear, no panic, moving forward because there'll be adversity. Is that something that this team should be able to draw upon for the rest of the way? Absolutely, absolutely. Particularly this this level of, of uh, game, so to speak, and the 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 approach that they had was was excellent last week how we prepared last week and learning the the training element the preparation that went into it and and having that that show up was huge um a big part of that our our, our scout team players of the week last week were were Jalen Jelks who did a great job he was our our best in, imitation uh Shalik Calhoun uh BJ Kelly was our offensive scout which I think he's done a great job this fall a guy who's been battling for for playing time and not not having a bunch of run uh with the ones and twos and a guy that gave has given a great look for our scout team and really led those guys uh and then Tony James uh, a young man who are redshirting a true freshman from from Florida who can roll uh, was our special team scout team player of the week um and then our our players of the game according to the Various uh, staffs. The defensive player of the week was Joe Walker, uh, obviously a guy that that really put up a ton of numbers. And finally, not finally, but really in in a in a in a big time situation, made a bunch of plays that that he saw and played. Joe's been a little bit of an over analyzer in a good way. I mean that as a compliment, um, but really just just limited his his footwork and and triggered on things in in a really really good way. Uh, was our defensive player of the week. Our, our offensive players of the week were Keenan Lowe and Hamani Stevens. This is the only place where Marcus Mariota is not the offensive player of the week. Yeah. Uh, but Keenan and Hamani did, did some really good things. Uh, Keenan with and without the ball. And Hamani in, in moving around a little bit, playing a couple positions and, and uh, organizing things in there. And then our, our uh, special teams game ball, so to speak, goes to went to Charles Nelson, who had unbelievable uh, – effort in, in, in coverage in, in terms of making a couple plays, obviously had the one penalty uh, that will get rectified, but an a unassisted tackle, at a, the, I think it was about the 13-yard line on that one kickoff was a huge play, and Charles is a guy that has nothing but, but big things ahead as well. Mark? Hey, Coach, can you talk about um, <clears throat> when you recruited Devin Allen and, and saw him uh, on film, I don't know if you visited with him uh, and saw him live or anything, or maybe one of your assistants saw him live. Um, where he is now as a football player compared to then, has is, is it been a lot of skill development for him, or has he always had the ball skills and, and sort of just the football acumen? I think all of those things. I think, yeah, his football acumen will definitely increase. He's, he's uh, always been a tough guy that could really run. That's competitive, and that 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 combination of of those three factors that those usually are in you know very rare rare percentages of guys, and then the fact that he has a is an incredible desire to improve. He's a smart guy. Uh, the sky the sky is still the limit for that guy. He had a couple obviously big big plays uh, with the ball in his hands, and he's a guy that we think can can be that guy for us, along with a few other guys to to spread the wealth. Mm-hmm. We have a question from Dennis Dodd here. Uh, Mark, can you quantify uh, Marcus's mobility? Because it's not just forward and backward. It's seeing things in the back of his head, knowing when to take off. Uh, that that showed yesterday. Yeah, Marcus is, I mean, special. No, I can't. I, it's hard to quantify stuff like that uh, is the short answer. Um, and... You know, you can simulate those kind of things and the feel, the pocket presence, all those all those buzzwords that people try to, you know, get out there. But until you're doing that um, in a game like this, it's just talk, you know. But he, he did a great job a couple times, probably a little too much, but that's made up for by the few times you're just sitting there at the end of the play going, wow. Have you looked at the, the pitch to Royce? Mm-hmm. 
um, I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe it because he had 60 yards of field in front of him, <laughs> but then avoided three guys to make this great play. Is that again? again just how you, you draw it up. Coach Frost drew that up right on the sideline. It was very impressive that they could pull that off. No, I mean, it was just the, yeah, it was 100% improvisation in terms of how the, the pocket broke down he stepped up stepped backwards I think stepped the other way and then kind of escaped and you know he could have he could have probably run it and had Royce become a lead blocker but he started to stumble I think and just kind of to, to got it out to him and that was obviously a huge huge conversion was there a point in his knee rehab where like a moment okay it's 100 percent, he's full go do you remember that point or uh, no uh, yeah we don't really talk about in those terms yeah no it just one day it was he could do everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You guys have talked about um, how matchups will dictate how you use the running backs, and week to week it might change depending on the strengths of the other defense. What about Michigan State led you to kind of use Byron in his role and Thomas in his, and Royce kind of exclusively in the fourth? He was mm -hmm. like, owned that quarter. What? About yeah, that. yeah. We had again going into the game, um, we had a lot of of two tailback, three wide personnel stuff and that that includes byron in kind of a multiple role on the perimeter you know starting from the first play tried to target him on the first play and get get that going because again michigan state was not a team where we're just going to ground and pound and make a whole lot of headway and so our our plan going in was you know try to take our shots try to you know try to to get the play action game going try to get the perimeter uh game going run or or whether it's a bubble screen or a conventional screen going early and then try to, to, to grind it out late. And, and that worked out. Could have, would have, should have had a few more shots. Uh, but again, it's a team like that. You're going to have some, some plays that are great and some plays that look ugly. We have a lot of, a lot of faith in Royce and complete total trust in, in giving him the ball. Absolutely. Was that sort of a coming out game for Eric Armstead a little bit? And, and the second part of that is uh, he and Buckner, and I believe Balducci, played a lot more than, uh, you know, you guys had rotated D-line. seemed like they played a lot of plays. They played, you know, they we want those guys to be in there as much as they can, as fresh as they can. And so we're not going to, you know, sacrifice production just for keeping them in there. And I think our depth shown through there as well. We had, uh, you know, Tui Tulia was in there. Austin Maloata was in there a bunch. And, you know, TJ Daniels, we still tried to, to we actually played eight defensive linemen. Uh, and again, against a team like this, you're going to need some, some multiple bodies in there to rotate through. But I think definitely Eric Armstead stepped up in a, in a big time situation. You know, some of his best games have not against been, been against our best opponents. And that was really encouraging to see again, his training, his mentality, uh, kind of changes pay off. So it's not a Jerry Azanero, uh, four men in, four men out sort of rotation. It's a little different. Now, rotation it can be it can be yeah we've we've rotated one at a time two at a time or or, or done the wholesale hockey shift mm -hmm. mark What's that called oh, mark. line change line change mark one one mark. of the issues in the defeats last year was just trying to get off the field on, on third down and you got off the field in the second half in really spectacular fashion with tyson tipping that screen mm -hmm. eric with a couple of tackles and then evo's interception obviously how do, you, how do you go from just not being able to get yeah. off the field at all in those situations to doing it, to really having some guys make some big time plays? Yeah, the first half and the second half were polar opposites. I can't, what were we, one for seven, I think, on third, uh, third down in the first half on, on offense, and they were spectacular on third down. And, and you know, in, in many ways, that was the tail of the tape. And I think, I thought the turning point, other than, you know, a couple of those big plays by, by Marcus and obviously the, the flip to Royce, was after they converted the third and 12. A lot of teams go, here we go again. You know, and, and again, it was a, a play that we had defended. We had a linebacker kind of bite on something that wasn't there. They converted by, you know, by 12 yards and four inches and, and converted. And I think a lot of teams coming out of the locker room, coming out of halftime, here's our plan, here's our deal. And to have that, again, kind of a little bit of a gut punch. And then the next play was a tackle for loss. Just to, to you know, rebound from that, is, is a, that's a big deal. And that'll pay off down the road. There was a sense of kind of here we go again, I think, say, against Stanford or against Arizona, just trying to get off the field. Almost Maybe by field. you, Rob, but no, I, I think just I think just keep you know, continuing to play and, and and guys realized again where they're 
where their job, you know, where their puzzle piece fit. And, and, you know, then we started getting after the, the passer a little bit more. He was a little more uncomfortable uh, than, than he certainly was in the first half. And part of that schematically, DP did a great job changing it up. And part of it was guys just doing their job. Mark, last week you said you weren't pleased with the tackling on the defensive side of the ball. How did they do this week in particular in one-on-one -on -one situations? We ran better to the ball, you know, uh, which is encouraging, and, and we need to, to get better. Um, and, you know, there, there are a few lapses in that in, in South Dakota, just in all 11 guys sprinting to the ball, playing with that relentless effort that we want to be known for, and that was better. Um, uh, but still... That can all, you know, it's it's hard to play eleven man burst to the ball football for X number of plays, and but we're gonna we're gonna die trying. Didn't realize that Epo had six of his eight career interceptions are in the red zone. I'm gonna imagine that doesn't surprise you, Mark. And if you could just say a few words about how he played and just Epo overall. Well, yeah, Efo Efo's a stud. He, he that guy again, a guy that just works his tail off at, at training every single day. Does a great job motivating the young guys and, and coaching them up, and 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 shows up in big time moments. And yeah, that that the the layout tip pick is a perfect example of just playing with tremendous effort. He started to sprint on a pursuit angle and made a play. You know, and when when you're sprinting to the ball, good things are going to happen on defense. Mark, he also tackles well. Always. Absolutely. Absolutely. Efo's the total package. I mean, that's that's the thing about the guy. He's a he's an elite cover guy. He's an elite physical, uh, whether it's a nickel corner, you know, force guy. Uh, and, and he's just a, a great guy off the field. Jake? Mark, you mentioned Joe Walker earlier and how well he played. You guys obviously expected that out of him because you started him in the game. Um, what went into starting him over Derek uh, and, and going forward? How do you see uh, the inside linebacker position battle i guess as mm -hmm. it is now with those two guys yeah it'll be you know we don't talk much about player availability but it's the best guy for the job at that time you know whether that's uh sometimes those are based on performance in practice sometimes it's based on health sometimes it's based on personnel grouping you know that either offensively or defensively or in special teams and we we, we try to put the best guy in there for the job a uh, totally different subject. A Michigan State beat writer today wrote that kind of putting part of the blame of the loss on a, a Oregon, he claimed pumping music or pumping loud music into speakers in the East end zone when Oregon was on offense in the, in the second half. When Oregon was on offense? Yeah, when you guys were on offense. That's what he said. Do you guys pump music into, into pump loud noise into the speakers when you guys are on offense? <laughs> I wouldn't be very smart if we did that, and I'm not, so I don't know. The No, the uh, Autzen uh, experience, I think, is enhancement-free. I, I think we can very safely say no no augmentation or enhancement, no silicone or otherwise. But uh, we do definitely need I, – I heard that, um, you know, there's still almost 1,000 tickets left for the, for the Wyoming game, and, and obviously, you know, we, we need every single seat filled and everybody going crazy, whoever the opponent is, so – uh, would love to keep our, our sellout streak going and keep Otzen at least uh, qu unquestionably fill, filled with something, artificial or otherwise. Andrew. Was that Andrew Greif? No. Michigan State that. be right about that. No, Michigan State. <laughs> um, you have a lot to like about this team so far, but what still concerns you? Just again, you know, it's funny. You sit down and start watching the film details. Just, it's, there's always little things. Um, you know, Marcus Mariota, there, he actually made a few mistakes in this game, believe it or not. Uh, and, and other guys, you know, route spacing, timing, depth, uh, gap control, guys sprinting to the ball, tackling. You know, uh, we had a couple misfits in, in the return game, obviously. Uh, there's always stuff to, to, to improve upon. And the great part about our team is we're going to come back, getting ready for Wyoming exactly like we got ready for Michigan State and get better. When you're trying to milk the clock, like on that last kind of quarter-killing drive, 6.30 or something like that off the clock, is it, is it hard to milk the clock with this offense? Do you have to, yes. do you have to practice that? I mean, how we, do you – what are the mechanics behind trying to milk a clock with this quick-strike offense? Mm -hmm. We absolutely practice it, whether uh, we have – various drills that we're doing during during training camp of maybe it's just offense versus defense and it's a four minute drill in a traditional sense and then we'll flip it we'll have kind of a competitive deal where it's let's say the one oh and the two day one oh and two d are combined to play against the whatever i said the opposite two oh and one d and one of them's ahead and one of them's behind and just play it out 
And so one team's going to end up in a, you know, a two minute drill situation. One's in a, in a four minute drill, but yeah, we, we, some of our guys get antsy. You could see some of our guys, they're not, they're not used to that. Uh, but didn't, did a really nice job of finishing that drive. Um, and, and, and in the game. Warren. Mark, I'm- Mark, you, you saw, <clears throat> or last week you talked a lot about, uh, Michigan State's defense and how they play their quarters, and it's a pretty vanilla defense. Was there anything that they that Coach Narduzzi showed you, or or, or that you didn't expect? Was or did they play exactly what you thought they would play? They played exactly how we thought. You know, they played their defense. You know, they didn't they didn't change for us, and I wouldn't expect them to. Uh, they 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 play a very aggressive style, a very sound style, a uh, very a very good style, and you have to take your shots. You know, we we made some, we didn't didn't get some, but as far as uh, you know, looks and, and pressures and, and, and that that sort of thing. They did what they've done, you know, at some stage. They, the, the great thing that they do, uh, particularly on third down, and that's why you don't want to be in third down too much against them, is is they, they vary their looks with their three down personnel and, and, you know, give a look of bringing a bunch of guys and not bringing very many, but you don't, you don't know who's coming and who's not. And so to, to stay out of those situations, uh, you know, is the is the goal, but that's much easier said than done. Hey, Mark, I, I hold, hold on, Jason. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sure Crosby was matched up a lot against Shalik. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about how he fended him off. Because Shalik, he's quite an athlete. Yeah, they're you know they played a bunch of D linemen as well. They rotated a bunch of guys in there and. They had a couple of lines that were very, very good looking that weren't there once. Uh, and yeah, I thought Tyrell battled. Uh, you know, he made some mistakes, had had a couple of uh, uh, young, you know, mistakes that, that he'll watch the film and go, oh, yeah, obviously. Uh, but when you're doing that, in, again, in that in that atmosphere against that type of a guy uh, or guys, uh, you know, that again, that'll do nothing but but kind of forge you for the future. Go ahead, Jason. Oh, okay, uh, Mark. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say we're, we're, you won't give us an update on Andre. Why? Uh, so, with that said, uh, who do you move forward with at right tackle, and then also right guard? Because I think Pasarczyk played uh, some, and Hunt played there. Uh, you just talked about your right side of your your offensive line there. Dennis Dodd at right guard. Andrew Guyfrey right tackle. <laughs> Yeah, you can. We'll we'll sort all that out. How did how did Jake Fisher grade out? That's one sheet I don't have with me. Uh, good, you know he had, he had a couple couple uh, couple of uh, minor errors, but you know played hard. They fin- finished for the most part really well. I'm not sure. Did, did they move Calhoun? They move Calhoun, don't they? He usually plays to the field. But okay. They, you know, he okay. was, he was, yeah, he was around a little bit, moved around quite a bit. How, how does Marcus get a player of the week honors? Uh, what do you have to do to get? <laughs> he did last week. He did last week. We kind of said that, you know, uh, in our, in our staff meeting last week is, is, you know, we better give it to him now. Cause he, you know, again, he, he, he'll get, he'll get plenty of love. And, and and doesn't doesn't need it. Are there any more questions on the phone? Real real quick, if I could, just I know you're going to talk about during the week with Wyoming, but they have a coach, Mark, who's won big time at another level. Uh, what do you just expect from from him and the team he brings in? That's undefeated. Yeah, he he's you know already already done a great job of kind of instilling their. Their identity, how, you know, they're very multiple on defense, very very sound in in special teams, and they're physical uh, in the run game. You know, he's very much kind of from his Nebraska roots, uh, and then obviously had, had built the program into a, a powerhouse in North Dakota State, and you've seen what they've done this year already. Uh, and so it's it's a different challenge in terms of how they line up and the defenses that they they play but uh again very much the same and we have to focus on ourselves